I'm sure I've mentioned at some time that whenever the beloved disciple shows up in John's Gospel, it is clear that John is making a point that he wants the beloved disciple to be an inspiration for us to do what he did. So, in this evening's Gospel, the beloved disciple outruns Peter. Obviously, we're not being encouraged to outrun Peter. After all, Peter's in heaven and we're not able to challenge him to a race, at least not yet. Not till we get to heaven ourselves. And even then, I'm not so sure I'd want to take him on. So, we look farther. The beloved disciple got to the tomb first, but didn't go in. Is there anything there for us? Well, maybe. Maybe we need to approach the history of our Lord's resurrection with a bit of awe, like that disciple who saw the grave clothes lying in the tomb, but did not rush in to handle them. Awe is always appropriate at Easter. And so are good manners. The beloved disciple waited for Peter. That's the kind of respect we in the church could do well to show to one another. But maybe there's more. Yes, indeed. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. He had not seen the risen Lord, but he believes. Mary Magdalene is still weeping. When she sees the risen Christ, she doesn't recognize him. It's only when she hears him call and grabs him around his resurrected knees. But the beloved disciple, with no physical appearance of the risen Lord, believed. And in that respect, we do indeed have to be like him because we don't have Christ's visible presence either. We do have his presence. He comes to us in the bread and wine of the Holy Communion. He's present with us in the fellowship of believers and the gospel of his resurrection. He's present to claim us as his own in the water of our baptism. But we have to believe in his presence because we can't see him touch him, feel him. In a way, it's kind of funny. We don't have to be able to see the air, touch the air, feel the air, taste the air, in order to know that the air is there. All we have to do is breathe. We just know it's there. We keep on breathing. Somehow that doesn't seem quite the same as the presence of our risen Lord, which is every bit as real as Too bad in a way. If somebody were to ask you, do you believe in the air? I doubt if you would say, yeah, I believe in the air. More likely you'd say, no, I live in the air. I breathe the air. I don't have to believe anything. All I have to do is keep breathing. And if someone were to ask you, do you believe in Christ? Could you say, I live in Christ? I eat and drink Christ? I wash in Christ? Sure you could, because it's the truth. And that's the big point the Gospel of John is making when it holds before us the example of the faith of the beloved disciple. Our Lord, who died on the cross for our redemption and rose triumphant over sin and death, is more than just an old story. He is a living presence, a reality in the life of every Christian. And that's why we're here tonight, 
celebrating our Lord's resurrection and our participation, our baptismal union with him and his real presence in the Holy Communion. We sing ourselves in praise of the risen Savior who's here with us right now and in whose presence we live forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.